tea or a can of Coke or a glass of water with you, you might want to press pause for a second and get one. This video is 35 minutes long, so I'm giving you the heads up first. Why is it so long? I did toss up doing a part one and a part two, but personally, you know what? I hate that. I hate when someone, you're watching a video, you're really engrossed in what they're doing, and then they say, come back for part two. That does my head in. So guess what? I didn't do that to you guys, because if you're choosing to spend 35 minutes watching one of my videos, I'm gonna give you the heads up. I'm gonna tell you to grab a snack or whatever, and it's gonna be a ride. What I'm creating is a four page layout. Now, sometimes I don't always video this sort of, these sort of videos because they're kind of, well, I don't know if you wanna see it. Let me know below if this is the sort of thing that you would like to see in future because quite often I do these off camera and I try and stick to single or double page layouts because that's pretty much the norm of what people do. Um, so I went into the Echo Park Be Happy collection. To say I love this collection is an understatement. This one so far this year is my number one for 2023 and we're up to June. So the second half of the year better pull out some, pull out all the stops because Simple Store, uh, Echo Park have done it again. So this one is called it's an Epo, Ep, Echo Park. Oh, I can't speak. I'm literally, I'm literally preempting everyone going, oh my God, this is so long. I, I apologize. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of different things during this video. This one, I'm tearing the papers because I'm trying to create, as you can see, I've got the two 12 by 12s and then I've got one in the center that I cut down. It's not a four, it's not, it's, I just cut it down to the size that I wanted it to be. And at the very end, you'll see why. I'm not, I don't like constraints. I don't like being told that I can't create a page to the width I want, right? So I'm showing you a way with the plastic cover over it, the whole lot, right from this point, right through to that point. Now, this particular layout, I, I can tell you when I get to the to the plastic part and I show you how I do that, I apologize. That was Tazzy. She's <laughs> she's she's now in the film. Um so that's my mum in Tasmania, by the way. Um we just call her Tazzy here because we have so many nannies, poppies, grandmas, granddads, nans. So we call her Tazzy. So my kids can differentiate who the heck I'm talking to. So basically this layout took me, it took me about six hours in total. By the time I worked out and there was a fair bit of pausing, thinking and whatnot. Now I did consider cutting all that out, but I know that a lot of you like the fact that I leave it in and I speed it up so you know exactly what I do. Now, there was a couple of pieces and I will tell you when I do it, I show you a portion and then I stop the video and keep going because it does take a fair bit of time. And you guys didn't, look, I value your time as much as you value my time creating these videos. It's not a quick exercise. <laughs> it's creating these videos does take a fair bit of time. I've got it down to a pretty fine art now, 12, actually it's 18 months later. Um, so I just, sometimes I just need to pause and, and have a look. Now there's no actual measurements for what I've done here. I, to be honest, I'm not a fan of measuring. It does my head in. Sometimes if I'm doing a very, um, a very linear, and of course, look, check it out. Every time, every time I start a video, my tape runs out. Does me, does my head in, mate. But that's all right. Okay, so I am, 
I prefer when I'm doing something like this, I like to wing it a little bit to start with and then I'll refine it when it comes to adding photos and that sort of thing. I've already cut out all my photos. I've printed 27 photos. So, and they're not little tiny one by ones. They are, the photos are two and a quarter by four inch. I think they're four inches. Hang on, I've got one right in front of me. How about I measure it? Stick with me. Here's the music playing in the background. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so it's two and three quarter inches by four inches. I was right. Two and three quarters by four. That's the size of all my photos. So I print my photos on my Epson photo printer. I'm so bummed that I cut this paper. It's the one with dragonflies on it. And if anyone knows anything about me, I love dragonflies, anything dragonflies. And I was actually going to use these because I wanted this to be a lot of pattern and patterns and florals and I wanted to have a country feel. And because I was talking and I, was, I wasn't thinking and I cut that paper, so I'm a bit ticked, but don't you worry. I will figure out a way to work it into another layout. So watch this space, it will happen. So then I decided that I'd pull out, this is just a 12 by 12 black cardstock. I will never buy this cardstock again because it feathers when you cut it. It's a really cheap cardstock. I did buy it from Amazon and it, I'll be honest with you, it's, I think it's called Clear, Clear Tree or something. It's, don't buy it. Do not buy it. If, if you like your lines to be crisp and not all feathered and looking distressed unnecessarily, don't do it. I've nearly used it all up. Then I will get myself some more. So if you have 12 by 12 black cardstock in your stash, what do you, what brand do you prefer? I'm personally looking towards just going with American Crafts. That's what I'm looking at at this stage. But let me know what you think. So now you can sort of start to see, once I put these black lines on here, it shows you more the three lines. I have zoomed the camera out a fair bit so you can see all three pages in production. And it, it seems, I know at this point you're probably thinking it's, really? It's, that's pretty full on, Karen. But what I'm scrapbooking is a family trip that we took down to West Wyalong and that Darren's got family, my husband, my husband's name's Darren by the way, um, he's got family down there, lots of family and we went down there, we took a family holiday and I'm really glad we did because it was actually the last time that my father-in-law was able to get down there and if you've been watching along on Facebook or whatever, um, my father-in-law is not a well man he's um he's struggling a lot and that's where i disappear to every so often you might try and message me on facebook or something and i may not answer you it's because i'm down looking after him and taking him out and taking him to medical appointments and all that sort of stuff so unfortunately um yeah there's no so there you go there's a spot where i showed you i was matching the photos with black and then i paused the video you know how to photo mat so it's not it's not anything that requires me to put it all on video so I skipped over that bit but I just have on my photos it's like one not even an eighth of an inch it's about a sixteenth of an inch I will measure it because I have a photo I had two photos left over that I didn't use yep it's a sixteenth of an inch. That's how thin the borders are that I, when I do black and white like this, see how it's there, but it's not dominating. That's what I like. It's clean. That's what I call it, clean. <laughs> so I'm adding my photos down because I don't want to keep, um, I don't want to keep moving the photos off and moving the photos back on. And to be completely honest with you, it would not only do your head in watching that process but it'll bug me so I know this is where I want these photos to go like I said 27 photos they're all big enough that 
you don't have to squint or go find a magnifying glass to see them and because I wanted to use so many photos that's why and I wanted to tell the story with this one you know how sometimes I do pages a lot of the time and it might be just everyday events and I love scrapping the everyday that's that's my one thing that I love because your everyday today like if you've got little ones I know there's quite a few people that watch me that you know they don't get enough time to scrap and all that sort of thing and it's because they you know they've got little ones believe me this time flies take photos stash them because you will be very 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 surprised at how quickly time goes and how scrapping the everyday this is me sorry this is me mucking around trying to work out how I actually wanted these to go down um you'd be very surprised so this was obviously a family holiday so I wanted to scrapbook it uh, a little bit more and a little bit more in depth now the reason if you're if you're an OG right from the beginning of create with Karen you would probably notice that I have scrapbooked some of these photos before but because I have two children involved with this particular holiday we didn't have Jen by this stage I actually wanted to scrapbook it twice because down the track my girls might want the memories each so for me one of them is way more in depth and one of them shows the story tells the story all that so they both tell the story but one has probably it's just a different layout it's not really more photos or less photos but I wanted to pay homage to the holiday itself so sorry I just need a mouthful of water lots of talking and I am doing this in the morning I was not going to leave this one until night time <laughs> Now, you're going to see the biggest mistake ever right now. If you have stuck around here for more than five minutes, you know that I have a couple of wonderful people that have bought me some scrapbook.com low tack mint tape. And I love the stuff. It is awesome. But wait until I try and lift it up off this off these photos oh it's it's not good it sticks to them I thought that it would be fine that one comes up perfectly not a problem and I'm just transferring them to the next I thought at this point see how carefully I'm having to take that off there and it's left it all tacky all the stick has stayed on my photos so here's a warning if you're using mint tape do not put it on top of inkjet printed photos because it sticks and the sticky stays on the photo I know that sounds crazy and these these tape rolls then you like they I got Shay sent me some and so did Nancy I think it was Nancy um, sent me through so I've literally only just got my hands on mint tape so it's not that it's old tape I think it just try sticking it see I'm very being, being very cautious here um, try sticking it to like I've done here put some cardstock and stick it down and use that as your barrier I just didn't want the texture paste to get put onto the edges I wanted it to be specifically on the white bit could I have done the stenciling first absolutely but I didn't want to waste all the texture paste because that's why why put texture paste underneath something it's just wasting the product so basically I've gone through and I've just done it like this and it worked it's not a problem it worked a treat this is just a very old stencil by the way it's like tiny little leaves and it's sort of done in a bit of a V fashion. So I just put them sideways and it just gives me a little bit of, how do I describe it? It's kind of like a watermark. When you look at it, you can see the shadow of the texture paste on the white cardstock, but you can't see 
it doesn't jump off the page. So it's not like the yellow that's a big contrast. I could have colored it. I could have at, tried to color match the yellow, but that's not the look I was going for. So because I know where I've put that texture paste is where all the journaling and all the title and everything's going to go. So we are getting there, guys. If you want to pause and go and grab a drink, if you didn't grab one to start with, it is still going. So um, I'm just drying off that texture paste now. And as you can see, this is how it will look in my album, just like that. Okay. Now, this is my journaling. I actually printed my journaling out and... As you can see, I printed it out twice. I put it through on just normal photocopy paper to make sure it was going to go through, not a problem. And then I put it through on a sheet of my Epson archival photo matte paper. That's what I print all my photos on. Okay, so I like to stick that through my toner printer and it goes through and it is perfect. It is crisp. It is beautiful. And then you can cut it down from there. So we will come back to that portion a little bit further down the track. But to start off with, I'm working on my title. Now you can see, you may have noticed that I've got a little clear photo mat, a uh, photo mat, it's not a photo mat, it's a um, sticky mat. These, this is the, um, what's the brand called? universal craft mat and it is six inches by eight inches and you can use it to put in your stamping uh stamping platform but i bought a couple of them because they, they were dirt cheap they were like 2.99 or something but i bought them so instead of using my cricut mat like i have here i've just put the outside piece on the clear mat because this particular font it needs to be done a certain way and you need to keep it all together so I just kept one on my Cricut mat and then I'm looking for something here at the moment by the way I'm looking for my metallic pearl rub-on paste I've had these forever there you go I zoomed it in for you too um oh that's Jen's coloring in she was doing she wanted to show you now I wanted to create the look I'm going for is a piece of old tin that's what I'm going for so this particular font was out of the Cricut design space and it comes you can obviously just use the tent you could just use it like this and not have anything in the center you could use the center pieces and not have anything on the outside you can use both of them together completely up to you you could even use these as a stencil if you wanted to it's totally your call so i decided to go over the outside pieces with distress oxide ink in black soot now i'm very roughly going over this because then what i'm going to do so i've had these forever i don't even know if this company exists anymore i don't even think it has a company on it it's called metallic rub-ons virtually acid free <laughs> virtually do you like that um there's kit one and kit two. I bought both of them. The one that I'm choosing to use has got a couple of different colors in it. And what I've decided to do is just get a dry paintbrush. This is just a, an acrylic paintbrush, just a flat, cheap one. And I'm putting it in the silver and I'm brushing all the same direction, top to bottom. And I'm creating a metallic finish over the top of the black. And what it's actually doing is creating a faux metal look. You know, when you see those old signs, when you go out west, um, you, well, I say go out west because I'm on the east coast of Australia. But if you, so if wherever you are, north, it might be north, it might be west, it might be whatever. But for me, when you go out west and you think of, you know, all the old signs, that's what they look like. So I did toy with the idea. This is what my original idea was going to be to back these letters with my dragonfly paper, seeing as I'd already cut it. But I think it's too busy. I think it's just a little too busy with that font. So then I have gone over the Cricut part of it with the ones that are on the Cricut mat. 
I'm now going over those with the Distress Oxide as well in the black soot. I'm just using a finger dauber. Why do I do that? Because it's small, it's cheap, it's effective to get a lot of color in one spot and you're not wasting your ink getting absorbed into a larger ink, what do you call it? You know, with your larger daubers, I'm not, I'm not going through and I'm not using lots of ink getting stored in that. It, it's just in the dauber. And then I keep it in my plastic container and I can go back to it whenever I like. Quite often I use it and I don't even need to re-ink them. Now I'm going over this with blue metallic. So the inside letters have a blue metallic shine to them and the other letters have got a silver metallic shine. I know it doesn't sound like there's a lot to it, but at the end of the day, when I'm finished this, you'll notice that it does it, it makes it stand out a bit more and I love it. Now this is me just cutting some one inch long strips purely because I think that's going to make the process of popping these letters on here easier and I think it's going to work. I can move them around. I can play. I like to be able to, if I've got my title and if it's on a strip, I can audition, I use inverted commas, audition it in different places. So it really does, it really does work if you have the ability to, sorry, I'm just plugging in my laptop. Um, and it really works because then you can audition it in different spots and you haven't put it down. You're not trying to move all these letters from one spot to another. It just makes it easier. Try and refine your processes a little bit. If you like something, try doing something like this. It just makes it easier on you to get your positioning right on your layout. So this particular, so what these little, these outside bits are, okay, so I didn't make you watch me put all of those together. I've put, all I've done is put the outside letters on the black strips. That's all I've done so far there. Now I'm going through and I'm showing you how I'm putting my journaling on here. So I've printed it all out. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting it over where I had the texture paste or where I've got the texture paste on the white section. And that way, and I'm not at all concerned if it goes over onto the black a little bit, that just adds a different visual effect. So I've actually done that on purpose and I'm just cutting the letters that, sorry, the sentences up so they flow and I've got them all cut into strips. The strips are different sizes, they're different thicknesses, but that's okay. I, I'm i not worried about that. And it's going on white. So it's kind of, yeah, it's sort of a bit of tone on tone sort of look. So you've got the white texture paste with the black writing on the white strips. I just like that look sometimes, especially if I'm writing a long story or a long, for this it was our holiday it's what we did on our holiday the last time I did one of these I actually did a um, pandemic layout and since doing that one I've come up with an easier way to do it so that's why I'm showing you another another way just another way to do this and this is how I put it into my albums so I have changed my albums from back then which was the creative memories albums I now use the either the universal albums from um, where do I get them from crafts online when they're on sale or I purchase we are ones uh, I have purchased one of them from um, Cass and Jacques and I did get which is crazy craft obsession sorry um, and then that was very quickly done. And then there was, um, I buy my, my sheets, my covers, I buy them in a bulk pack. So it's pretty good. I can't complain about that. It's not too over the top price wise. Okay, guys, you've made it 24 minutes in. I'm just letting you know we're at 24 minutes. You've only got 10 to go and it all starts to come together now. So 
I leave it zoomed in at this point because I'm showing you how I'm doing my title. So see how it being on the strips, I can move them around till it looks balanced and then I can stick things down and then it will make sense. See, by cutting the ends off, you can see that there's black behind it, but method to my madness, I actually, I do this bit off screen as well. I go through and I add, and you'll see how I've added it. I'm putting some foam tape inside on all, so I glue this down and I do use a little bit more liquid glue than I normally would. I'm using the art glitter glue, which I swear by. It is fantastic glue, but I am using a bit more of it than I typically would normally. Um, because it's going, I'm trying to get the glue to adhere to the texture paste because it's raised up. So yeah, it does take a little bit and I do have to press it down a couple of times, but it's okay. Now you can see I've gone through and I've put foam tape inside all my letters and I'm just going through now and I'm adding the blue lettering on top of the metal pieces that I've added down. It does take a little bit of time to stick these guys down, but you know what? This is one of my embellishing phases. Um, this is me with my emery board cleaning my tweezers. That, If you want to know how I clean my tweezers, by the way, I have two sets of tweezers. I have some that are slight offset ones and I have some that are straight and I never let my kids touch them because I've sharpened them both to such a point that it's fantastic for craft, but I just use an emery board to get the glue off them and it works a treat because that is one of my tips, guys. Make sure you maintain your tools. Just take five minutes out of your day and remove the stickiness off your scissors, remove the um, glue that's on your tweezers. It will make your scrapping so much better because it will flow and you're not fighting with tacky glue. So as you can see, I'm while I'm waffling with all that, I am popping down all my letters and you can see while I'm zoomed back a little bit, you can, you can read it. It looks great. When I zoom in a little bit more, or if you pop over to Instagram or Facebook to see the close up photos, you'll be able to see how it looks really cool. <laughs> it, it literally looks like old tin, which is fantastic. I absolutely love that look. And it suited the place perfectly because it's a little country town and it, was literally like our little country holiday. It was fantastic. So now I've got to this point. Now I come in with some liquid pearls and it's silver pearl that I'm using because on these little squares, there's these tiny little circles that you would assume would be to nail through or thread some thread through or something like that. But what I chose to do was use a bit of liquid pearls and just do little tiny dots over the top of them and it just looks like they've been pinned on. So I love that look. It looked really cool. I was really happy with that. So I move that out of the way for a minute while I move on to showing you how I create my next, my plastic sleeve for whatever size I want to put in my album. So I pull out a plastic sleeve. This is just an old one that I bought at a garage sale, to be quite honest. And I have practiced this on one other before this to make sure that it worked and it did. So I take that piece off, but I'll keep it for something else probably. Now I'm running some 1 8 inch double-sided tape up the side. Now I'm gluing it down and I'm making sure that it sits perfectly. Now this little gadget here I bought from Amazon for $6.99. It's a bag resealer. So all I'm doing is squeezing it down, running along the line and bam, I've heat sealed my the edge and then I just go ahead, took a bit of fiddling because I was hooking on the photos on both sides, <laughs> but that's okay. And see, there you go. That's how simple it is to create a page. You might want to make it 10 inches wide. You might want to make it you know, a little bit thinner. This is how you can make your albums 
you know, a little bit more unique just for you. So I did have to take the plastic sleeve off again though because I hadn't done the pen work that I wanted to do and I wanted to use some of the stickers. Now I'm not much of a sticker user but when I buy these collections and they come with a sticker pack, quite often there's a lot of sayings in there or some wordy bits and pieces on that 12 by 12 sheet that will go with my layout. Now it's got some B's so obviously the paper collection is called Be Happy and I absolutely love these little bees they're so cute and because we were in the farm we we're down in farmland it was fantastic so I stuck some bees on there because they were appropriate I can't use bees if there's no association to bees or country or whatever I have to that's my brain I can't I can't just use them for the sake of it so I did pop a few of these stickers. I did run a bit of the black soot ink around the edges just to make them not look so much like a stick and plonk sticker sort of thing. Um, but one of the photos, which is of my old car, it got hammered. We were actually in a, the, a, there was a plague of grasshoppers down there and we drove through these hoppers and I kid you not, there was millions of them. They were just shredding fields. They were, the amount we had to chisel off my car, it was disgusting. It was horrible. And the poor farmers having to deal with it, it just blew my mind. Us city folk, we don't, I mean, I wouldn't call myself exactly a city folk, but I did raise, was raised in the country, down in Rath County for a little while. Um, but FYI, there is so many people that have no idea what the farmers put up with. I know they were dealing with the mice plague there for a while. I don't know if that has got any better yet. Um, not to, sorry, Jen needed me to fix something. There you go. She wanted me to cut it straight. She couldn't work out how to do it. So, um, yeah, they were dealing with the mice plague back in 2010. It was a grasshopper plague and those things just eat everything. It's like a locust. They just eat everything. So it was awful. So I had to put that photo in there because it's something that I had to make sure that to me was important for the kids to remember that side of things and how difficult it is for the farmers. You know, it's not easy getting the food from the supermarket or the milk from the plastic bottle. You know, it, it takes, you want a T-bone steak? Well, guess what? The farmers go through a lot to get that on your table. So um, now I'm using my silver, which I don't use my silver very often. This one is my Uniball, it's a pigment ink. It's Uniball Signo, does it say broad? Yes, so it's Uniball Signo Broad Silver Pen and it is it is so beautiful, it really is. I don't use it very often, I usually reach for white but this particular time because of the metallic letters and the metallic rub on and the silver pearl that I put in the dots with the liquid, liquid pearls, I thought silver worked perfectly. So I just wanted to add some sort of faux stitching to these pages just to liven up that black strip a little bit and not make it look so flat. And so I just run that through and then that is about it, I think. Um, yeah, so then I just do some close-ups for you guys. So if you like this layout, if you're still here with me, thank you so much. If you're still here with me, Comment the number uh, 35 in the comments for me. That would be amazing because I'd love to see how many people make it this far through. I mean, I can look at the an analytics, but I'd like to know how many people are actually getting all the way through the video. Even if you fast forward it, still go ahead, still do it. So here is my close-ups of my photos, my torn paper. You can see the texture paste in the background. You can see the titles, see how it's 3D, but it's silver on the back with the nails or the screws or the whatever you want to call them. It stands out and you can see all the photos on there. They're all nice, large photos. 
can see the decorative paper and the decorative cardstock. You can then see on the smaller sheet, like I said, it's not A5, it's not anything like that. It's just, I just went, that's the size I want. So, um, so yeah, I will tell you how wide it is actually, because I have the other piece of plastic here. I cut three and a half inches off the edge of the 12 by 12. So that would have brought you back to one, two, three. So it's eight and a half wide. Maybe it is pretty close to an A4 actually. It is pretty close. So thank you so much for watching guys. I will be back with another video tomorrow. Won't be this long. <laughs> and I'll chat to you then. Thanks so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I will be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching guys. Bye for now.